Well, things can change in the blink of an eye in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and that's exactly what we have in one of the marquee matchups in NHL history between the Devils and Rangers in round one of the 2023 Stanley Cup playoffs. The New Jersey Devils have come back from down 2 nothing to even the series at 2 after a pair of wins across the border in New York for New Jersey. I'm James Burley for WFUV Sports, and after watching the New Jersey Devils all season long as a beat reporter, you got the sense that they were missing something after their first two losses at home to open up the playoffs against their bitter rivals. But in games three and four, we have seen a very stark contrast in the way that they've played, going back to their roots, playing fast hockey from the beginning of the year to the end of game 82, which is what they desperately missed in games one and two of the playoffs. So this one, a huge, huge, huge mentality win, composure win, and all-around win as it evens the series at two, and the Devils now returning home to the Rock in Newark with a chip on their shoulder. A three-game series remains, and two of those games are going to be in New Jersey, yet a single home game has not been won yet in this series. Both the Devils going 0 for 2 in New Jersey and the Rangers going 0 for 2 at the Rock. And one of the main stories of this playoff series has become the rise of Akira Schmid, the 21-year-old Swiss goaltender who wasn't even part of the NHL roster at the beginning of this season, meant to be probably the fourth goaltender on the New Jersey Devils depth chart when you consider injuries to Jonathan Bernier and as well as Vitek Vanacek and Mackenzie Blackwood, who is scratched for Vanacek and Schmid. Vanacek started games one and two and struggled conceding five goals in both of those. Schmid has given up one in just in each of games three and four. And it's not to say that this has been a super surprise because we saw him during the regular season with 18 appearances, only gave up two goals in relief in many relief appearances and looked great uh, in, in replacement of Blackwood and Vanacek throughout this season. So it's really no surprise to see him be this calm and composed, but to have done it at the Garden in the playoffs is remarkable. And Akira Schmid deserves all the praise he's been getting at the moment. However, the Devils were not alone in this one from just their goaltender. It was a 200-foot performance from the entirety of New Jersey's team. And they went toe-to-toe -to -toe against a really tough New York side who Lindy Ruff, the coach of the Devils, was giving praise to for their ability to defend and their personnel on the blue line, as well as some of the top goal scorers that they have. Between Chris Kreider, whose five goals set him apart from every other playoff player in the NHL, his four power play goals from games one and two is an NHL record. Uh, Artemi Panarin and Mika Zibanejad still continue to look dangerous every time they have the puck. And the Rangers, of course, dominated the Devils in games one and two and really looked good in parts of game three and some parts of game four. So you have to expect a punchback is coming at this point. And the Devils delivering their punchback to know what that's like. However, in this one, it was all New Jersey at the very, very start until it looked like it was going to be a great two-on-one chance for Capo Caco and the Rangers. His shot misses the net, and Jonas Siegenthaler floats one to the other end. And just three minutes in, who else but Jack Hughes to skin Igor Shesterkin out of his pads to make it one nothing early on for New Jersey. Now, a bit of penalty trouble for the Devils uh, in the first and second going into that third period, something that we've seen haunt them in games one and two, but... Their penalty kill was 5-for-5 five five on Game 3 and 3-for-3 three three in Game 4. So the Devils really did well with the punches and the bounces that they hadn't been dealing with well in Games 1 and 2. And the Rangers really struggling to find their footing. But it would be in the third period that Vincent Trocek would get on the board to get Pai the seemingly unbeatable uh, Akira Schmid. It was come, came off a chance. Chris Kreider found it in the slot, fired one off of Schmidt's pad, and it came out a very fortunate rebound from Vincent Trocek, who snapped it through the wickets of Schmidt with a fiery, just on the ice little wrist shot. Stuff that goaltenders hate dealing with. And yeah, a great chance for the Rangers to tie things up. And now you felt like with MSG back in their laps, with the way the Rangers have been so good in third periods at the Garden uh, this year. They led the NHL and um, come from behind victories in the third period at home. It's a very specific stat, but that was a very specific scenario that they found themselves in tonight at the Garden. But they just fell short because Jonas Siegenthaler found a great feed from Nico Hischi. Very rarely will you see Siegenthaler be the fourth man on an attack. The defensive defenseman found the pass from his country mate, the Devils' captain, and whipped it past Shesterkin off the far post and in on the rush. Devil scoring on the rush again. That's just the way that they like to play. And from an unlikely contributor, Jogan, Jonas Siegenthaler, who picked up career playoff points one and two on the night, assisting Hughes' goal in the first and scoring the go-ahead goal in the third. Andre Palat would later add the cherry on top with the empty netter to give the Devils officially 
a two goal lead and two wins in a row in New York to even the series up at two. A remarkable comeback for the Devils who have only now just for the third time in franchise history come back from down to nothing in a playoff series. And now they go back to the Rock on Thursday for game five, a place where they haven't won in the playoffs yet this year. And this will be their third try. So basically we are set up for a three game series Home, away, home for the Devils, away, home, away for New York. And with the way that this series has been going, you'd think that road ice advantage would be uh, a better thing to have going into the elimination games. But you can never uh, overestimate what it means to be at home. Got a chance to hear from Jack Hughes after the game. The Devils goal scorer and star player was constantly getting booed by Rangers fans every time he touched the puck. So he's sure to be happy to go back home, but he also embraces the challenge that the Rangers fans gave him. Take a listen. No, when you're down to nothing, that has nothing to do with experience. That has everything to do with us not playing very well. And, you know, we got to, like, we're playing a really good team over there, you know? So that's a team that went deep last year, and they got a lot of good, really good players. So. So many questions still ahead of us as we head into games five, six, and potentially seven, which would be in New Jersey. Gerard Gallant and the Rangers have not seen uh, many lineup changes, if any, since starting the playoffs. The Devils have not changed since Game 2, and you imagine that with the hot hand of Akira Schmidt, they're going to be relying on his services in Game 5. But now we have no idea what we're going to be up against. 2-2 two, two, the series is tied, clean slate, back to the beginning. Will we see the same sort of uh, style of play from Games 3 and 4 be brought up by the Devils? Will they revert? back to some of the inconsistencies we saw in games one and two? And will the Rangers take control like they did uh, late in games one and two? Because games three and four did not seem like they had any grasp on the game for nearly as many uh, long stretches as they did in New Jersey. In New York, it's the Devils who come away with two wins as we head back to New Jersey on Thursday. For WFUV Sports, I'm James Burley, and I will see you guys next time.